Hello, everyone. This is Sierra from Awakened Heart Quantum Healing. I am so excited because I'm going to start mm -hmm. reacting to my old channelings. And so for my first reaction today, I have the wonderful Sophie with me. Sophie, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi, everyone. So I'm Sophie. Um, I've been working with um, Sierra for a couple of months now, um, both as a client and also she's a client of mine. <laughs> um i've helped her like down, do her website and like help her with marketing um but most importantly i've been going through a spiritual awakening for the last four years um and it's been quite a ride and so obviously i have a lot of interest in like all the spiritual topics and the different modalities and healing modalities um and sierra invited me here to react to some of her first like channeling videos and that's really interesting for me to see how much she's evolved from a couple of years ago until now. And also like how maybe our beliefs um, have changed and some of the things that she used to resonate with, like don't resonate anymore. I'm also here to provide like a genuine like reaction to um, this video because I've never listened to that channeling before. Um, so Sierra kind of wanted like, you know, like an external point of view on this first channeling that she's ever done. So that's kind of why I'm here today. Yeah, absolutely. And I love Sophie so much. And I owe so much to Sophie for my business because Thank she you. created my entire website. <laughs> and if you guys haven't seen my website yet, go and look at it because she did such an incredible job. Like Sophie truly has this talent where it's almost like if you tell her and explain to her your spiritual vision or like say you really wanted to help people, it's almost like it's Sophie, you can tune into that. And you created a website of like exactly the message I wanted to portray and exactly how I wanted to help people. And so I can just, I truly could never thank you enough for what you've given me. Oh, thank you so much. And that was a pleasure working with you. And, um, you know, that's great that you're saying this because my approach is really like being intuitive, like brand strategist um, slash kind of marketing coach. And um it's been quite a transition for me because I come from the corporate world. So like all the business and, you know, like classic stuff. Um, but then, of course, my spiritual awakening kind of forced me to be like, OK, is what I'm doing useful? Am I helping in any way? And we know that when we go from, you know, that that just an awakened state to like starting to wake for the first time, like one of the first thing that we start to feel like is, OK, I want to be in service to others instead of just service to self that's like the biggest shift and so like how do we make that happen and for me it was hard because marketing is kind of like all about greed power control like money and <laughs> making more money for yourself and you know and just serving like big corporation and entities and i wanted to find a way to kind of put my skills and experience in service to spirituality and so that's why i completely shifted and created an entire business and the goal is really to help any spiritual healers, teachers, um, you know, anyone that's really kind of like offering alternative modalities and could be like Reiki, can be quantum healing. It could even be like, like yoga teachers, meditation teachers, like anyone that's helping people feel better, find their path in any way, shape or form. I'm here to help those people amplify their message and shine their light in the world. That's pretty much it. Yeah, absolutely. And you play such an important part. So Sophie and I, um, we will be starting a podcast soon that we're so excited about. Yeah. But, um, that is going to come later. So just watch for that. We're so, so excited about it. I think it's going to be really incredible. And it's almost felt kind of, it's felt very divinely guided. Like it's almost, it was something that I was meant to do. And yeah. Sophie is helping me with that as well. And so today we are just going to have so much fun. <laughs> We're going to react to my first channeling ever as a little baby channeler when I was trying to bring all this information through the first time. For anybody that is newer to my channel, I started this YouTube channel right at the beginning of my spiritual awakening, right after I did my first QHHT session ever that was so special to my heart. The intern that I did the session with, we became friends instantly and we just started 
doing sessions on each other and we would post them on YouTube. And that's how I started growing my business. So my entire spiritual awakening is on YouTube. So we are going to go back to each video and listen to the information coming through. I can give you context of like what was actually happening in my life. And then it's a beautiful way to see how our beliefs expand as we awaken. Because this was only a year and a half ago. And I feel like I've kind of gone through a second awakening that was very intense for me. But it's also the coolest thing. Now I can go back to those old channelings and see how much I've changed in such a short amount of time because yeah. I was willing to go into my traumas. Yeah. I was willing to do the work. And it, just watching myself as a baby channeler is so much fun. And I think it can be – if we, there's so many incredible teachable moments on like how to build discernment, how to start channeling. If for anybody that's interested in channeling, I think that these reaction videos are going to be so much fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And how to like put your thinking mind aside as well, because that's a big one, right? When you start channeling, I'm pretty sure that's what you went through. Or even when you start to like, because I'm not channeling per se, but sometimes I get intuitive hits or messages when I meditate. And there's always like this little part of me that's like, is that? Is that my thinking mind or is that like really something that's coming from my higher self, you know? And I think that just getting in the habit of trusting yourself and trusting the message that you're receiving is super important, really, overall. Yeah, absolutely. So let's get started today. I'm so excited for you guys Thank to you. take this journey with us. Um, in the future, if there is any video that you want me to react to, please put it in the comments below. Um, if there's any questions that you had uh, during that video, if you had any comments or you're just interested on like what was happening to me during that time, because I went through a Kundalini awakening, a starseed awakening, a twin flame journey in my own way. <laughs> I had all these different kinds of awakenings yeah. happening to me all at once. So I'm so excited to give you context. So let's jump into the video today. So we'll see how far we get through this video today. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I will post a link if you guys want to go back and watch the full channeling on your own. So it's going to or we're going to start with release fear and step into your power. So I'm going to let this video play um, for probably about like five minutes. I'm going to try to let it play, but we'll see when I stop it. We'll start it right here. What about Earth makes this the best place to learn lessons? Earth is such a beautiful planet. Mm -hmm. It is an experiment among the stars. It's a very interesting thing you said there. So if Earth is an experiment of the stars, why did the creators of it want to see that happen? What was the end goal? So the Earth is a beautiful peace treaty yeah. among the extraterrestrials because you have higher dimensional beings and lower dimensional beings that came together to create the human beings DNA. Mm. So you have multiple beings, uh, the most well known being Pleiadians, Arcturians, Syrians, Lyrans, um, and then the lower density, uh, density beings being the Oct or I'm sorry, the Anunnaki. And this is what makes humans so special is because they have the higher dimensional emotions and they have the lower dimensional emotions. This is very rare. This also allows humans to have experiences that are not able to be attained on any other planet. So being or having that said, the duality of being of higher dimension and of lower how does that make humans react on a day to day? This is a learning process. Mm -hmm. Humans are getting better because the darkness, there was much darkness on this planet and it was just a young planet in its evolution. So, <clears throat> okay, I'm sorry, I have to pause it. <laughs> Yeah, okay, what do you have to say now? <laughs> Sophie, I was such a baby. 
<laughs> yeah, you just, you just you, yeah, you, I mean, yeah, you can hear it's your first time. It's like for the first time connecting and getting information. And I can hear in your voice that you're kind of like even questioning what you're receiving, which is interesting. That makes sense, right? Because like, I think that's important for people to understand like the first time they channel or get information in any way, like if it's QHHT or anything like that, like it's almost going to sound like you're making up stuff because like you're just going to question yourself, right? So you're just, just going to have those doubts that are coming in and I can kind of hear it in your voice a little bit, I think here. <laughs> oh my gosh, that oh, that is such a good point. I remember that that is exactly what I was going through was it was like it just felt a lot of things that we channel about we have already been learning about. So as I started channeling all these videos, it was just the things that I was learning about in my life at that time. Mm -hmm. And so I started to learn all of these things and then they would come through in channeling. Like it was almost like I would learn something that week and it was preparing me to channel about it. Mm -hmm. And so you're right. Like I definitely went into, I even went through that phase of like, can I fully trust the information coming through? And I think that that is such an important lesson that yeah. all channelers have to learn. Yeah. And just the people that do their first BQH or QHHT session. I can speak to that, right? Because I've done a few BQH sessions with you. And my main issue is really like my thinking mind always in the back there that goes like, you're making this up or, oh, you've read this in like a Dolores Cannon book and this is where it's coming from. Even though like sometimes the information comes really clearly and I get visuals and all that, but I'm still like, is this really like real? Like, <laughs> can I really trust it? And I think that idea of trust is so important. Oh, like, yeah. Some point, if you're going to like channel or connect or to any source of information, like you have to trust and like even trusting your own intuition is a really big challenge at the beginning. And I, honestly, I still struggle with this. Like, I'm still like not fully sure. Like whenever I connect, I meditate, or if I do like a session with you, like, can I really trust this? Like in the sense of like, maybe my own mind just making it up. And that's, yeah, a, big, that's a big one, I think. Yeah, that's definitely the biggest that I see in clients. And then I think like we already hit a spot where my belief system has changed or expanded. Mm -hmm. So when they started talking about how um, we have higher dimensional emotions and lower dimensional emotions, mm -hmm. and this is so funny because like you can see, I think it's like, I think I did actually get a little confused in towards the end of this video, um, but we'll talk about it when we get there. But um, <laughs> I that has, this has changed so much for me. So I actually think that our personality lives in the soul. So we have like a soul personality that is who we are on a soul level. And that's why we can come back to who we are as a soul once we start like really getting rid of like our conditioning and our programming. I think that like if you were to die and pop out of your body, your personality, like that soul personality is going with you. And we can on the other side as well we have our full spectrum of emotions. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is an idea that has like really shifted for me because mm -hmm. I always had this idea that um, earth, that humans were so beautiful because we could feel so many emotions. And I think there are beings that like, maybe they don't feel as many emotions as we do, but I think that the soul is just like so unlimited that it can probably feel even more emotions than we can as a human. Mm -hmm. And see, that's interesting because that's where our beliefs are differing right now. Because I still, so I'm not, I think that this idea of like lower emotions and higher emotions, um, there's a lot of judgment in here. So I actually don't resonate with that because it seems like, why would you bring judgment when you're not supposed to judge anything? But like the way I see it and it's, because I'm kind of still on, like believing in 5D and things like that. And it's just like, you know, this um, at some point, like the higher you go, like maybe the less range of emotion you're able to feel. And so like Earth is probably the planet where you can feel like some of the largest range of emotion possible that you can find. So like anything bet be like, like between fear and anger and, you know, like the desire for like control and greed and power. 
And then maybe like on the other end, obviously absolute love and pure like bliss and joy, right? But like in the higher dimensions, at least quote unquote, like it's, you're just like supposed to be more on the end of the spectrum. Like beings are not supposed to be angry or, you know, like just desire control and stuff like that. But I wouldn't judge those emotions lower because they are just emotions. They are just experiences. So what if maybe we come to earth to kind of be able to like experience the whole gamut of emotions, you know? Because maybe in the higher realms, quote unquote, like we might be limited to like some like like a little like less emotions. Like we don't have access to like all of those other experiences, right? But from a human standpoint, we're gonna think those are lower than like lower emotions because you don't like to feel angry, you don't like to feel sad. Like you know, we just we want to get out of it. But for a soul, I could totally see as that. Hey, I've never experienced sadness, so I'm really curious about sadness, and I'm gonna come to Earth and I'm just gonna really get into a situation where I'm going to suffer and experience that deep pain and suffering and sadness so i don't know what you think about that so like i said i think that like our soul is so unlimited that i do think we can get into a space where we still have our emotions on the other side but when mm -hmm. it comes to like our soul being limited to an experience then yes like earth definitely holds this polarity of all of the emotions yeah. where we have to where we're here to experience, we're here to experience in opposites. So it's like we're here to experience those emotions like sadness so that we can learn what love is. Yes. So we're learning in opposites and polarity. In Earth. Yeah, no, totally. And because you cannot realize what joy is and how powerful bliss is if you haven't like been like in the deepest suffering right like yes exactly really you need both and i love what you're saying about this is a place of like polarity and duality right really because that's what i was getting at like i my belief so far is that you know like if you go up like five six seventy whatever like the higher you go the more you're in unity and if you're in unity you're everything so like you can't really you don't have any like opposites you know yes. <laughs> and and even like if we go like a, like the, the highest level, which is source, like source is everything. So it's like, what if like we're just fragments of source, right? So like as fragments of source, we come here to just be able to like experience a little aspect of us that like if we were to stay as source form, we couldn't experience at all. Yeah, absolutely. So for the people listening to this, if you have any ideas or you have experienced any types of beliefs around this, I would love to hear about it. Yeah, absolutely. So let's um let's continue with the video. We'll see how far I get before I mm -hmm. pause it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can many humans lived in their lower their lower emotions and then they also had to deal with the low densities of the earth. So they were they were forced, more forced, to live in these lower frequencies of being. Mm -hmm. However, as the planet is, ascend is ascending and the frequencies are raising at a very fast pace, they're going to have to learn how to integrate the darkness. People think that the Galactic Federation of Light is to bring peace and harmony to the entire world, but the Galactic Federation of Light is to balance the dark with the light because you cannot have light without having darkness. And that is what this planet completely represents. It is a peace treaty between the light and the dark. And we need the human race to continue at this time to make sure that this peace treaty is complete and to make sure that the earth can continue on the current timeline. Thank you for that. So how can humans on a day-to-day -day basis combine those two aspects of themselves or make them work? The most important thing that you could do at this time is shadow work. Yeah. Look deep inside of yourself and ask yourself, what is the dark that you have not integrated yet? Look at yourself and say, what are the things holding me back from living my soul's purpose? What are the things that I need to front or look what are the things that I need to look at deep inside of myself to find my truest being? 
especially with the frequencies that are in this planet at this time. There are many energies that can cause many chaotic thoughts. And if a person is not grounded in who they are, then it can cause much confusion in somebody's mental state. That is why you're also seeing humans at this time that just cannot handle the energies on this planet. That's why you see shootings. That is why you see many homeless is because there's higher vibrational energies and these people have not grounded themselves to be able to to be able to live in these frequencies. What's the importance of grounding? It is very important to ground, especially for light workers that are of a higher frequency. You must ground yourself so that you can ground energy and help the planet at this time. Mm -hmm. You must ground yourself because you must remember that you are still in this reality. You are still in a third density for now. There, there is three dimensional and there's third density. We can explain this as the third density. Sorry, hold on. I'm trying to like talk fast so I don't let myself get in my way. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh. Okay. So, a few things. I remember um, instead of like when. I first started channeling and for people that want to start channeling that I think this is a really cool teachable moment. When I first started channeling, I remember instead of just allowing myself to step back and be in that like that flow state of just allowing the information to calmly come through in the present moment, it almost felt like <clears throat> I was trying to like force it in my excitement. Mm. <clears throat> And I realized that when I was doing that, a lot of the messages, they were getting really distorted and it had like almost this anxious feeling behind it of like things have to happen now or um, it didn't, it felt like it had more of me a part of it. Like, um, of course, channeling is a co-creation experience. But when I was like trying to force these messages to come through, it felt like a lot more of my ego was coming through when I was trying to channel quickly. When I thought that that was the way that I was opening myself as a channel. Interesting. So you think that maybe like, and that's actually a really interesting point, I find, because one thing we have to remember is like anytime we channel or we hear someone channeling, there's still a personality and there's still a filter, right? And it's like, you can get some information, but maybe even without realizing it, this is going to come out a little distorted because of the filter of the subconscious mind. That's going to kind of put an overlay on it, right? Or just a different, slightly different meaning or something like do you think that's possible to actually like channel like in a really, really pure way? Like, like to just not have any sort of like filter applied to it that's coming from our conscious or subconscious mind? Like I'm thinking more about the subconscious mind. Like I think here you were talking about your thinking mind that was kind of getting in the way, but there's always like it. I guess what I want to say is like whenever you hear some channelings, like probably just take it with a grain of salt, right? And then use your own discernment to see if that resonates because even if the intention of the person who's channeling is pure, like there might still be some distortion in it. Yeah, and I think that, um, I think there are people that have become very open channels. Like I think Matias De Stefano, his channeling is like, Mm -hmm. he turns into that person. Like (laughs) Mm -hmm. that is a different form of channeling than most people can reach. Like he says that like he is here to be a portal. But even then he says that like he can feel his consciousness in the background, Mm -hmm. sometimes even questioning what's coming through. Yeah. And so we just have to remember that like, this is a co-creation experience and not to 
get so caught up in the information that's coming through as truth. I think a lot of people, yeah, like they see channeling as truth. And I think that that can be kind of a dangerous place to go. Um, I think that there's a lot of information that is incredible that can come from channeling. But um, I was watching the Terrence Howard and Eric Weinstein interview and Eric Weinstein at the end of it, he said that um, people take just a piece of the truth and they run away with their delusions. And it's so interesting. Whoa, that's, yeah. that's, 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 that's actually pretty powerful. That is so powerful for a spiritual mm -hmm. awakening because yeah. we get so caught up in the things that excite us and yeah. in the truths that we find along the way that we create an entire delusional reality out of it. Yeah. And he's saying that like right now we're seeing a society that has created these mass delusions and we don't know how to get out of them. Mm -hmm. And for me personally, I resonated with that so deeply because um, it's actually interesting that I mentioned that the Galactic Federation, it was here to just maintain the balance between the dark and the light. Mm -hmm. And my very first channeling, like, mm -hmm. Sophie, after everything that I've gone through recently, that is so mm -hmm. crazy. I was that, of that just right now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the fact that that, it's almost like that message is in here for me now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because mm -hmm. the Galactic Federation, like, um, and again, not judging anybody's belief systems or anything, but I think that that was, I took a piece of truth and got caught up in like my own delusions of what it possibly could be. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And there's something that came to my mind when you were talking and because we also have to remember that we are co-creating this reality constantly with each other, right? Because our thoughts do create our reality. And so when you say, oh, you're going to kind of latch on to that little thing that's going to resonate the most with you, and then we're going to amplify it. So it's almost like we're turning it into our reality. And if we're doing it on a collective level, we're turning it into a collective reality. So it's kind of interesting, right? Because Everyone, there's a lot of people that talk about Galactic Federation and spiritual community, and it's almost like, well, have we brought this into our reality by kind of co-creating that reality where they're like this super, like, you know, kind of federation that are there to help us and protect us, and we've actually given them so much power. Yeah. And, you know, and it's it's kind of really crazy and interesting in that way, but like, yeah, you and that's why discernment is so important. And I think that at some point we really need to dive into like, how do we develop discernment? Because I know for me, that's been like, and I'm still not quite there, I think. Um, but it's been like one of the hardest thing. Because when you're awakening at the very beginning, you're hungry for any piece of information you can find because it's so confusing and you're so lost and you're like, oh my God, I need direction. I need something, right? And then you're just going to find something and there's a tendency to just find something, follow a certain type of like maybe one person or a couple of people on YouTube and then just run with it and don't even question what they're saying. Especially if it's like bringing answers to some of the questions you have. Yeah, and that's what I think I'm hoping to do with these replays mm -hmm. and these reactions is like just pointing out to people when they should use their discernment like yeah. because these are even things that I channeled and these are things that I believed to be true at the time yeah exactly and so now we can like look at these things and ask ourselves like why did we resonate with it at the time yeah or why was this so important to me at that time in my life and how have I learned how to use my discernment after that? Yeah. Okay, so the densities are different planes of existence. And then the dimensions are, you can look at it more as a realm. So we have the third dimension, which is the dimensional plane. Or I'm sorry, hold on. They're like showing me. Just this is important to know at this time because everybody keeps saying that they want to run away to the fifth dimension and they need to understand that this is 
a state of being. It's not something that we can run away into. Yes, the planet is ascending from a third density to a fifth density, but we have to understand that this is more of a mindset that yes, this will allow us to step into our truest power. This will allow us to use our psychic and spiritual abilities that we all have, but it is also going to, it is going to take a lot of inner work because we have been stuck in these three densities or three density way of being. So you can see the density as like your state of being as where you can see dimensional as the physical reality. Okay, this is so interesting. Sophie, do you see how fast I'm trying to talk because I'm not mm -hmm. trusting the information coming through? Yeah, yeah, I can hear it. Yeah, and I think that it actually, um, there's a lot of distortion here. <laughs> like, I give myself a break because it was my first channeling ever. <laughs> But there is just a lot of distortion of like what the density versus the dimensions mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. There is a little bit of truth in here. It's just yeah. um, there's a lot that I wasn't trusting. And so mm -hmm. I was trying to force it. But I was going to say, though, like the like the underlying message, um, like we just listened to about like it's not a place where we're going. It's a state of being. I still fully resonate with that. Yeah, I, I love actually, that. And, I honestly do too. And at the beginning of my spiritual awakening, I was hoping that was going to be a different place <laughs> because spiritual escapism, like that's another thing, like another pitfall of like spiritual awakening. We're probably going to talk more in like different like you know episodes and stuff like that. But um, it's really um, like this idea that it's a state of mind. This is like for me, like as of today, this still like very much resonates. So it's kind of interesting because this message so far, I don't see like so many things that are just like, you know, we have to question. Like there's a lot of like things that still, at least for me, probably like, and you can, you know, be in a different like space, but um, kind of like resonate for me still very much. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, okay, let's watch. So you could see your uh, third dimension is obviously time and space. Fourth dimension is eternal time. And then the fifth dimension of awareness of your fourth and third density. So yes, we will have more of an awareness, but we will not be in that actual fifth dimension. We can reach that in things like meditation, but when we open our eyes, we will not be living in that actual fifth dimension. Whereas we can actually change our state of being and uplift our vibration to that fifth density way of being. Mm -hmm. And that is important for people to know because in order to get to that fifth density, you're going to have to do a lot of shadow work and self-healing because that is where you can let go of those three third density emotions and allow your body to raise its frequency. Mm -hmm. So the third density emotions are the, all of those emotions that are stored in our body. So things like breath work and meditation, any kind of emotional release is what people really need to work on at this time so that they can reach those higher densities as the planet raises its density as well. It kind of makes sense though. Like, I mean, I from my personal experience, like releasing the stored emotions that you've never been able to like let go of actually like makes you lighter. Yeah. So does that raise your vibration? Does that bring you to a different frequency? We don't know that. But does that free you from a human like on a human level? Yes, absolutely. Like, you know, like things like breathwork, somatic practices, they're so important, right? Because when people have like gone through like very intense traumas in their life there's like the first approach generally is like talk therapy and then go to like counseling and therapist which is great but there will still be this energy because emotions at least for me they're like energies like little energies like stuck in the body and if you don't release those then it's really hard to heal so yeah, yeah. so i don't know like is it coming from your higher self or is it coming from your thinking mind because you you know like i guess that might be the, the question here like right because it's it sounds 
real and true and genuine. Um, but where is it coming from? Yeah, absolutely. And then I, <laughs> I just had like a higher self moment when you said that, where it was like, Sierra, why are you judging yourself? <laughs> Because I'm seeing myself get very caught up on, like, I think just, like, what is density versus dimensional space. Yeah. And this is very confusing. Like, yeah. I think honestly, that's, like, I think that's what I'm talking about. Like, absolutely, we can release our emotions. I think it's yeah. more, like, I can see where I was getting really confused of, like, density versus dimensions. Yeah. So it's just, it's funny that, like, they even just took me here yeah. on my first channeling ever. Yeah. Do you have you figured it out now? Because like I don't know, like I, I find it still very confusing. And there's a lot of people that talk about five D, and you never know if it's like fifth density, fifth dimension, like different between like the densities and the dimensional planes. Like, is there a simple way to explain that? Um, I have an entire video on it where I really go into dimensions. A dimensional spaces as thought forms mm -hmm. so this is definitely something that like i've really expanded on so i will um i'll link the that okay. video here yeah, as well yeah. so that people can go watch that because you want to react that, to that video at some point yeah absolutely like i think sophie if you want you can go through all of these with me like i'm having so much fun right now <laughs> no this is really really cool and really interesting yeah it's so much fun Thank you for that. So it sounds like a lot of people have some misconceptions about what the fifth dimension actually is. Can you describe what the fifth dimension actually is and how that goes against what the misconceptions are? So the fifth dimension is, the fifth dimension almost feels like you if you've ever meditated, when you feel like you're in an electrical cord, where it feels like you're going through a portal, that is the fifth dimension. It feels great. <sighs> As Matias Stefano said, it feels great, but it gets very boring. Because <laughs> we really, we have this awareness that we are consciousness but we don't feel anything. Mm -hmm. It's just pure awareness. We can be aware that we are one. So it gives us that awareness, but then we also need to come down to the fourth or the third dimensions to learn lessons, to have experiences. Mm -hmm. So the beauty of this planet is the third dimension. We can't run away from the third dimension. It is This planet is about finding the balance with the third dimension and the fifth density at this time. So, and you can't learn or you can't be at a fifth density consciousness until you learn how to maneuver yourself through the third dimensional reality. So how can people, for lack of better words, master the third dimension? It takes a lot of self-care mm -hmm. and it takes a lot more motivation than a lot of people are willing to put in at this time. Mm -hmm. There will be things that will happen on this planet to push many people to begin to do the self-work. The most important thing that a person can do on the planet at this time is to heal themselves mm -hmm. so it all starts with self-healing so like i said things like breath work meditation just going inside and looking at the darkest parts of yourself and saying how can i integrate this how was how was this emotion protecting me at some point we have to become friends with these dark emotions because it is not something that we can run away from mm -hmm. because even at a fifth density consciousness this is the most beautiful part of earth is that you have those lower we're still going to have those lower emotions but we can transcend them so oh my gosh that entire message was so beautiful <laughs> yeah, it is it is. And it's really, it, yeah, absolutely. It does, yeah. it does resonate, except for the part where you're talking about the lower emotions because there's some judgment here. And it's yeah. like, 
we know that like from those realms, like it's all pure love, right? So judgment does not really have a place there. And maybe that's where like the thinking mind is kind of like, it's just trying to sneak in like its way in that, in that channeling at some point, because like the fact that you're judging those emotions as low, it's more like a human thing. Yeah, that's so interesting. I think that my perception at that time was trying to, I think I was just trying to explain like that they're lower vibrational emotions. Yeah. So like, you know how they all have a frequency. I mm-hmm. think that's like what I was trying to tune into. Yeah. But it just, it didn't come out in that way. I wasn't yeah. sure how to explain it in that way. Yeah. And and that's actually something super interesting you've just said, because I've heard some channelers say that um, like when you channel, they're going to use like things that you've heard of or um, things that you've seen, like they can only use what's in your brain basically to communicate. And that's kind of super important because I think that looping back to the beginning of this conversation, we're talking about like levels of consciousness. That's what it is. Like at the beginning, you are you don't have as much information as like two years in, three years in where you're able to like hold more information and you've learned more things. And then maybe that's why they can actually use like all of those different things you've been exposed to, to just share their messages and communicate. Any final thoughts on what we've listened to today? Yeah, I think it's interesting. I think I was, um, when you said that's my first channeling, um, you know, and you've like, like just kind of questioned so many of like the beliefs that you've had over the years, like I was expecting to really be like, (laughs) <laughs> more in disagreement with everything that's in there um and i'm actually not like there's so many things that still fully resonate like yeah. honestly. um so it's not as like yeah it's it, i was really expecting something different i thought that we were gonna listen to like things where i would be like oh my god it doesn't make sense at all so i don't know if it means that you know we're not quite on the same level of consciousness right now which is okay or if it's actually there's a lot of truth in what you've shared here the first time sophie i have some cringier ones that we'll definitely get into (laughs) like what do you think from your perspective like don't you agree like there's a few things here and there where you can question right and then the way like obviously sometimes you can tell that your thinking mind is trying to get in the conversation and just kind of take over and but for the most part like Honestly, this message still makes a lot of sense. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's like, that's why I'm excited to bring a lot of these videos back. Yeah. It's almost like um, they're getting lost in the algorithm. And by doing reactions, this gives me a chance to bring them back because there is so many beautiful messages that came through that I absolutely still resonate with. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I think it is cool to like expand on it because I was limited at that time. Yeah. And so I'm so excited to continue these videos. Yeah, no, this is going to be amazing. And um, it's it's a really good way to show people how you can kind of like start to see things from a different perspective, but while still sort of being true to your core self, right? And just like, does it, because it's not about like just throwing away all the beliefs we've had for a certain amount of time. It's more like, how do we bring a new light and I, we, how do we start to like view them with a new lens really yeah um, absolutely i completely yeah. agree so sophie thank you so much for being here with me today wow, this video is so you. much fun to record yeah, that was really cool. <laughs> thanks for having me yeah no absolutely we should, we're definitely going to do more of those and we'd love to hear from anyone like how did you you know how what what did that kind of like um, help you to understand like about your own beliefs maybe um, if you have any comments on like even the message by itself like just make sure you listen to the entire video because there's probably like more interesting things in there um, and uh, yeah Thank yeah you I will that. absolutely I'll link the video so that you can go and watch it um, I love everybody so much thank you so much for watching